Hey, this is Blake with Peaceful Heritage Nursery, and today we're going to be top working some fruit trees. Here I've got my scion wood, I've got my thumb wrapped up with athletic tape, and I've got a glove on for protection in case the grafting knife slips. So you always want to have to be really safe when you're using grafting knives because they're razor sharp. So I'm looking for a branch that is going to be matching the size of my scion wood. So I'm going to select one piece of scion wood here. This is NB02 persimmon. And I've got some really nice branches here that look like they're gonna fit it just right. So I'm gonna cut off that dried end of the scion wood. Scion wood's been in storage for a few months. Rubbing all the buds off. Okay, this looks like this will be a beautiful match right about there. So I'm gonna cut that off. Yeah, that's just right. It's a little tricky getting in there, but we're gonna get in here. And I'm avoiding making the cut where there were buds with that little bulge right there. So I'm going for a part that's nice and straight. Okay, now I'm cutting the scion wood. Go. Go make the little notch. This is whip and tongue grafting, which works well for persimmons. Okay, so I've got the notch in it there. So it's just a typical whip and tongue graft. Putting them together. All right, so that's a good connection there. You can see that. Now what we're gonna do is get it taped up with a rubber band. So you gotta wrap it really nice and tight. So that's wrapped up. Now the next step is buddy tape. All right, got my Grafting tape. And I'm going to carefully wrap this up, wrapping up both the wound that's been uh, taped with the grafting tape, and now I'm using the the grafting band. And now I'm wrapping the scion, and you always stretch it over the buds. So I'm stretching the tape. Pulling it over that bud. Then I'm gonna seal that off on the end. And now that one's good to go. All right, so here we've got a pear tree that uh, doesn't do well in this area. So grows nicely, but it's not adapted to fruiting here. So we are going to top work it to a different variety of pear. So there's a number of ways you can do this. You can just um, cut it all the way down and top work it, but I prefer top working individual branches. Okay, so I'm just gonna saw this off cleanly so that it doesn't rip off and pull bark off. Okay, so I've got a fairly clean cut there. Now, this is old school right here. So this is an old school traditional clefting tool for uh, cleft grafting trees. So I'm gonna put it in there just about halfway. Okay, you see how it split that open? It split that open there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not doing a, a whip and tongue on this. 
I'm just gonna expose the cambium on both sides by making a wedge type cut. Try to do it nice and straight. See, kind of like that. And you want it to be really thin on the ends so that it doesn't wedge apart the branch because you want the branch to be closed very tightly. Okay, so I've exposed the cambium here and here on both sides. And while it's still nice and green before it dries out, we're going to stick the knife in there and just open this up a little bit. I'm gonna stick this in there. So come over on this side and you can see right here is what you wanna see. So I'm just sticking this in carefully all the way down that it'll go. And you can see I'm, you want it flush with the cambium right there. The cambium of the, the root stock, so to speak, the tree you're top working. And you wanna wedge that all the way down in there and have it be flush with the branch. So that one looks pretty decent. Carefully doing this so I don't dislodge the scion from where it was inserted, so I'm trying to be super gentle. Stretching it over the buds. That one just popped through, that's okay. Closing that off. Grafting wax. We're gonna put this wax over this wound on the end to really seal that up and keep out moisture and insects and everything. So I'm just coating this with some wax. That's gonna help this be more successful. So this is all coated now. And so we can continue doing this on the other branches on the tree. And if even one of these is successful, which pairs top work very easily, but if even one of these is successful, then you can allow this to grow into a new trunk and form new branches eventually. And you can completely top work the variety of the tree, even if you just have one that's successful multiple ones are successful then you could have each one grow into whatever variety that you top work it to but you only technically need one to be successful to then turn the entire tree into a new variety so that's how you top work branches and you can also do this with pears you can also do this on the invasive wild bradford pears 
Uh, so if you have those on your property, you can top work those to any kind of edible pear, European or Asian. They make great rootstock and you can use an invasive species as a rootstock for an edible, edible fruit tree. Now do both these, uh, both these grass types, do they help with disease resistance? Uh, it depends on if the variety you top work it to is disease resistant, it'll carry that quality, you know, into the mature tree. Okay. So this is Hamiz Asian pear top working an old pair that's uh, not working out. So those are the two methods for top working trees. You can do this with apple, pear, fruit, uh, stone fruit trees, pawpaws, persimmons, uh, but this is a traditional method of doing this. So thanks for watching.